Yeah. There we go. Just took 10 tries to get to the next week. So I've been a ham since 1968. Uh, I was 13 years old at the time, so you can do the math and figure out what I am now. And I've been pretty active, except when I started having kids. Then it kind of went to the wayside. Moved to New Jersey for a while. I didn't do any hamming in New Jersey, which I did. The East Coast has it made in some ways. But I would never live there again. And then I ended up, uh, after getting out of school, I worked at uh, Bell Labs. That's why I was in New Jersey. And then I worked at three comms for here until they laid me off. And I said, heck with that, I'll just do ham radio. <laughs> I, I've always loved DX, so since I was a kid, I was enamored. I even remember the first DX station that called me, was which was DJ1AW. And that was so cool. And I was using a, a Star Rover receiver and a DX60 transmitter on crystals. One of the things I like to look through the magazines, and I liked a lot of stuff that I couldn't get. I liked the S lines and all that stuff. <laughs> but one thing I liked was the Geo Geochron clock. But then I looked at the price, and as a kid, I said, forget it. And so uh, I have one now because uh, I can afford it now. But then, I, then, I, then they came out with the 4K, which you'll see here later too. And I thought, this is just software. What can I do with this? And I did some searches and I found this application of Raspberry Pi. And I'm not a Raspberry Pi expert, so I can answer some questions, but I'll tell you the person in the club who is, and that's Lucas. So if you go to his website, sorry, Lucas, if you're watching, I just gave you away. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about what you need to do, what, how to build it, where you get the software, and so on. And step by step, we'll go through this. And then I have a lot of references in the back. Apparently, there's a lot of ham applications on. The Raspberry Pi, which is very nice. Like I said, I always wanted one. I have one now because it's a mechanical marvel in my mind. I think some of you sold some of yours too. I remember you sold yours, right? I yeah. remember I thought about buying that. I just bought one. And then I got one, and then they came out with the 4K, and I looked at that. I go, that's like what, three or four hundred dollars for the 4K? And it's just software running on a little PC. Thing. So I thought there's got to be a better way, and and there is. So I found this application. It doesn't look like it looks a little bit more like this, but you can set the screen up to show any number of things. You can show uh, a spots, live spots. You can show the sunspots, the propagation, and the gray line, of course, which I find very important uh, in, in the work. And of course, it'll give you uh, antenna directions if you need for a particular country and so on and so on. You can do a lot of stuff. Actually, it does a lot more than the 4K. The 4K does a few things it doesn't do, but this does a lot more. And it's constantly being upgraded too, by the way. Um, it runs on a Raspberry Pi, which is, I showed some pictures here. I've got some I can show you, uh, pass it around or whatever, but it's based on an ARM. It runs on either 1.2 or 1.5 gigs has Wi-Fi built into it. You can run Ethernet on it. Um, you can purchase it in any number of combinations. You can purchase the board. You can buy a separate box for the kit, or you can buy the whole kit. Paul was telling me about his kit that he's ordered. And uh, it's Linux-based. A lot of it's uh, it's all open source. And uh, MFJ actually uses one to remote to your station, which I find very interesting. That's my next project, is the remote stations, because I want to be able to operate anywhere I am. There's a lot of accessories also. You can get cameras, you can build robots out of it. So it's a lot of stuff. It's it's interesting as a as a kid or a younger Pam, it was building receivers, transmitters, linear amps, and all this kind of stuff, ETH kits. But now it's everything's so sophisticated. The, the, the building is really now in the software and the platforms like this. That's to me where a lot of the uh, creativity is. Can't build build the equipment to match what you can buy now for very little money. So I'm not gonna go through this list. You, you'll have the presentation somewhere, but this is all, you can't even read it on here apparently. I can read it here though. <laughs> but uh, these are all the features that are unique to hand clock that the 4K doesn't have. And I won't go through all, all of this, but it's very nice, it's very handy. So you need a monitor, of course, and here's a monitor. I brought one just in case uh, you can use a, this is not a 4K, it's a 1080, but it, it, it'll drive a 4K. Uh, you need the Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, with two gigs of RAM, 
16 gigabit minimum SD card, micro SD card, need the cords, the power supply, runs on five volts. So it's pretty easy to, to get that. And I have a USB and a mouse connected to it just to configure it. After that, you could take it off. Because my intent was, I have this monitor at home. It's, I have a, my ham radio hallway. And I found a, a 1080 um, display being thrown away on the side of the road. And they said it works sometimes. <laughs> so I grabbed it. And my wife said, no, not another one. <laughs> but I said, no, I can use it. This is where I'm going to use it. And I have it on the wall. And it works sometimes. You have to turn it on and off several times. And eventually it works and stays working. So the, the idea was to Velcro this to the back of it and just leave it there as a hand, like a geoprime. Uh, there's two there's a, a two websites to go to. One to get the, you need basically to do two things. You need to get the operating system on there, and then you need, need to get the application on there. So you, you put it all together, and uh, that's what we need to do. Then you put, use an imager to get the software, and then you boot it up, and then you download the the hand clock image. And then there's several options to do, but it's not too complicated. Um, I prefer you can get fans, little fans in the kit, or you can get uh, uh, metal cases that have a heat sink on it, or uh, this one doesn't have any heat sink on it. It's not doing anything really complicated. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much about the cooling. Uh, I started with a, a Raspberry Pi 4, which you can get for less than $60. But it'll also run on a smaller model because it doesn't have to do much. But that only costs fifteen dollars. The Raspberry Pi Zero. I'll talk about that later. So you hook it all up: mouse, keyboards, all USB connections. And the first thing you go to that website, and you download the imager. You go click on. Oh, wait. You click on the uh, operating system. And then you choose the storage device and you plug in your SD card into your computer for that. So the first thing it comes up with, sorry, it doesn't seem to be very clear on this, but just pick up the standard 32-bit operating system. There's lots of other options, don't bother with them. Just go with this. And then you, uh, and you click on the storage unit and then you hit write. And it says, uh, it's going to erase the data. Can you keep going? Yes, obviously. And then, then it goes through it. You can I did a screen capture of it. You know, it writes it and then it verifies it too. Are uh, you going to work on the focus? Thing. Yeah, let me try this real quick. <clears throat> That's a little better, right? Not great, but okay. We just you know, this projector just doesn't have the resolution. And then when you're done, you're going to get this screen here. It says, "Oh, you've got a bad SD card in it. Do you want to format it?" It's, no, because you just it just doesn't recognize this format that you put it into, which is a boot format for the Raspberry Pi. It's a Linux format, so make sure you do, you cancel or you're going to start all over again. You're talking about. Doing the formatting on PC or Mac. yes, I'm doing this on a PC, yeah, from that website that I mentioned before, which has a lot of stuff on it. So you stick it in the uh, you stick it in the Raspberry Pi, you turn it on, you boot it up, and um, I'm assuming you've connected the mouse key, and then you, you're, you're going to go through and you have to set up the Wi Fi, is like the first well, you set up the keyboard English, US, and so on, and so on. And then you set up the Wi-Fi so you can go to the next step, which is the browser for the application. So, well, it's still fuzzy. Well, right there. That's a little fuzzy on your slide, actually. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the... Yeah, because I did screenshots, and so it didn't yeah. work out so well. So there's my... Oops, there's my SSID, but you don't know my password. <laughs> yeah. And then when yeah. it boots up after you get the SSID and everything all in there, it gives you a screen here. You can change the background to whatever you want, but that's basically what it is. It's, it's really simple if you haven't, uh, it's, you know, there's basically everything you do. You click on the little raspberry right there to do anything else. So then you uh, you go to the, uh, on your, 
on your um let's see on your raspberry you go to the command line prompt which is right there and you open a browser so they have chrome and they have i forget the other one but they have chrome i use chrome so you go to the website here clearskyinstitute.com and you copy their code, their, their lines, which is this right here. And you paste it into the terminal that you opened on your Raspberry Pi, and then you execute it. And it downloads automatically everything you need to, for the, the hand clock. And you answer questions like, are you ready to go? Are you ready to install? And so on and so on. And then you're you're done. I chose mine because it's gonna be installed on the wall. Always running, to always run when it boots up. You don't have to do that. You can just click on the icon and start it. But I I just did it because it was a very application specific platform, and that's all it's doing for me is the hand clock. When you start the application for the first time, you get this screen right here. It asks you for do you want your geo to locate where you are? It asks you for that. Do you want to use the grids? It'll automatically determine your grid square and all that for you. You enter in your call sign here and your and the Wi-Fi, you just say yes. And then it just keeps going. Ah, the other option I mentioned was the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is what this is, which some lucky person is going to get tonight for free. Already working. It's like it was the size of a stick of bubble gum. Wow. And it's um it doesn't run a browser, so so you have to type in all those command lines instead of copying and paste. Unless you want to use it, you can use smaller browsers to get more sophisticated. There's Midori, which is a smaller browser that that will run on it, but just type it in, and it runs the same operating system. Everything it has uh, two USB ports. One is for power, one is for USBs. But if you need to attach more than one thing, you need to have a little hub to do that, like here I have for the mouse and the keyboard. And then HDMI output right here, which is real handy. And then your SD, micro SD card plugs in there. And um, that's pretty much it for that. And that's like $15, you can get it for $15. A lot cheaper than a GeoGround. <laughs> and so here, here's what I did on the kitchen table, just setting this up going through the routines to make sure I knew how to do it right the second time. And there's the screen there, and there's a closer up of what it looks like. There's my grid square right there. Did that automatically, time, sync, everything. And then, of course, I like this part. It has the NCDX, the, the beacons listed on there. You can't probably see them, but they're there. Um, this isn't the uh, end of the application. There's all sorts of applications. And I listed some sites here. You can get a whole ham radio pack. It runs FTA, everything on off of your uh, Raspberry Pi. And you can download that and then start running with that. And of course, I put uh, Lucas' site here at the end. I can send all the questions to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feel like that. And then there's some more references too. Just uh, some, it's pretty easy to find stuff. There's some YouTube uh, videos to, that'll walk you through it and, and so on. And that's basically it. Yeah. Any questions? There, there is a, a, ham, a ham radio base image. I am, I am, or I am, I. Yeah, that. I think I have it listed in the references. Yeah, it's hard to see. And it has, yeah, I mean, it has tons of. And radio related applications. Yeah. I, I was surprised at how big this was. And I, I was a little slow getting into it, I guess. Uh, I'd rather work DX, but did, did you did you ever run into the voltage, the USB voltage being too low? Yes, that's a good point. So I started out on the Pi Zero because it was smaller. I tried using some phone charger USB things, it wouldn't work. So you need one amp, five volts at one amp. 500 milliamps won't cut it. And it really but, needs to be a little over five volts. Yeah, you want like, like 5.1, 5.2, 5 yeah. Yeah, 5.2, two and a quarter. Oh, really? Is, I, I had a variable power supply hooked up to 
my what kind of the full size pie. I don't know about the Pico. If when it's five one, occasionally I'll get that notice. It, it'll still run. It doesn't create errors or anything. It just tells you your voltage go below. But once I crank up five two, yeah, I never saw that message again. So I uh, could hear Georgie saying the voltage might need to be five two for this. When I first started, I used a Raspberry Pi four and it was a kit, so it came with a power supply. Right. And so I didn't even think anything about it. And it doesn't use a USB connection for that, by the way. It uses a, a, a around 2.1 millimeter or something connection. When I went to the Pi Zero, that's when I found some of those five volt power supplies, like for charging phones, was not enough. Yeah. But I didn't think about the voltage. I was just looking at the current. At the time. Yeah. Pi, the Pi Four uses a USB C connection for power. Oh, well, yes, that's right. Yeah. USB C, yeah. You had a question. Well, I was just going to ask whether the uh, Apple uh, uh, charges that either the, the little cube, whether that it, would work. It works with us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am using a phone charger on this one right now. It's five volts at one end. Yeah. So if you have a USB to your mouse and keyboard and maybe a USB memory stick, you want to have a strong five volt supply. And a half, I believe. Prefer two hands because that would solve more communication. That's interesting. This is a one amp supply, and earlier today, this morning, I I started over again just to go through the whole routine, and I have this the hub here with a keyboard and mouse, and I had another uh, a stick in there with an S the micro SD cards because I wanted to copy the image after I ended up with the work on it. And it works. It just gets those annoying messages. I didn't get any of those messages. Weird. And the, the right combination. Yeah. This is a 2017 version of the Pi Zero. I don't have the latest Pi Zeros. It might be in some of the later ones require more power. Yeah, this is more of the, the, the standard Pi 3, Pi 4. 